I don't know what I'm excited about, but I'm excited. Let's dive in. Most hosts never achieve the results they hoped for. They're falling short on listenership and monetization, meaning their message isn't being heard and their show ends up costing them money. This podcast was created to help you grow your listenership and make money while you're at it. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Adam Adams. What's up, podcaster? It's your friend, Adam A. Adams. And actually, I have somebody that works with me on the show, in the house, the virtual house, Mr. Brian Newell. How's it going, Brian? Adam, I'm doing fantastic. Happy to be on the show. Awesome. It is good to have you. And we're talking about show notes. Because you know what's funny? I've been on a lot of the like podcasting groups on, for example, Facebook and some other places where there's a lot of people wanting to know how to do show notes. And frankly, like there's been times that I have somebody that's coming in and doing a discovery call or I have them on our show. So they're a podcaster. They're either wanting to work with us or they're having me on their show. And I look at their show notes and they just suck. They're just terrible. And a long time ago, I perfected the six-part show note system. And then I forgot all about what the six-part show note system is because other people do it for me, including Mr. Brian Newell. (laughs) So Brian is going to share with you just like how it is that we at Grow Your Show, when we're editing and doing post-productions for our clients, what are we doing for them? What does the show notes look like? What's important? What are the six parts? How do you do the six parts? What are the benefits of having all six parts? So that's really what we're going to talk about. We want to make sure that your show notes don't suck. If your show notes suck, it's not going to grow your show nearly as much as it will if they're good. Brian, I make it a habit of not doing this to any of our guests ever Because I actually don't think it's a really good beginning question for most podcast episodes to say, tell us a little bit about yourself. It's just like, it's so like, what's the word for it? It's so lazy. But in this case, I feel like since you don't have a podcast yourself, you work for our company, Grow Your Show. I feel like maybe it would be interesting for you to share just kind of like how you got here and especially if it relates to what you're doing for the company. But after you just at least say hi to us, well, we want to get the six-part show note system and figure out what it is, why it's so important, and how we do it. So, Brian Newell, my friend. Absolutely. Thanks again, Adam. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure to be on the show. So I came from 14 years in the corporate world, left that all to come work with my buddy Adam here. Adam and I met in the real estate arena, if you will, met at a few conferences and just really stayed in touch, became friends. So look at me now playing with the big boys, with the podcasters. And it's really a fun deal. I had a lot of experience with working with executives and doing reporting and a lot of analytical stuff and doing meetings. But really, this allows us to not only share your talents, but also help others achieve their goal, send out their message, and really just promote their podcast the way that they want to see it grow. So it's great. Drop the mic, man. Drop the mic. Your mic's attached to your head, though. That would hurt. Boom. That would be painful. All right. So here's the thing. Let's dive right in. I want to at least get an overview of what are these six sections, and then maybe we'll dive into each and every one a little bit more deep. Yeah, that'd be great. And the show notes are super important, right? It's going to tell you what the episode is about, what you're expecting to hear, what you can listen for, what you might learn. And of course, tells you all the information you need to know about that particular show. So I'll jump right in. The show notes, we divide into six sections. The first section is going to be a summation of the episode. The second section is going to be what you're going to listen for, a few bullet points. The third section is going to be any resources that we mentioned and talked about on the episode so that your guests can find it or your listener can find it, as well as the fourth section, any info about your guest. If you had an interview on the show, then it'll be your guest bio, how to connect with that guest and so forth. The fifth section is going to be all about you. So the host's bio, the connection information, and the sixth section. And the last one that we include is your sponsor area so that you can give a shout out to your sponsor or your advertisers. Awesome. So I want to repeat what I'm hearing. 
In the beginning, you sum up the episode. Then you share some bullet points of what the listener needs to watch out for. Then you share any resources, links that may be discussed, books that may be discussed that can support the listener. Going into information about your guest, if you have one. Going into information about the host. And then if you have a sponsor on the show so you can make money, the final piece would be the sponsor information. Is that right? You exactly got it. So with that said, like, what does the summation look like? What is a good summation? How long should this be? Is this paragraphs and paragraphs long because we're trying to get every single word that was ever used to make sure we're getting SEO? Or is it supposed to be short and sweet? Definitely short and sweet. You probably want to shoot for between one to three sentences, depending on the length of your episode, right? You might need an extra sentence if you have a jam-packed show and you have a lot of information to share, but really short and sweet is going to be the best bet. Simple, short, precise, understandable, less is more for that particular section. Cool. Awesome. So the summation, mainly if we can have it, three short sentences or less, and it's just like basically what is the episode about? Is that right? Just kind of sums it up. Exactly. It should spark your curiosity of the listener. Not too general, but a few words of exactly what you're going to hear. That's right. Boom. I love it. I love it. All right. Once you've given a short summation, instead of keyword rich summation of the episode, what comes next again? The next section is going to be things to listen for, or we call it your bullets. So like in real life, what does this look like? How many bullets do I have? What are they about? Am I answering the question or proposing a question? I'll let you take it from there. Yeah. So you'll probably want to have between three to five bullets. And again, if your episode is really long, maybe you throw a sixth bullet in there just depending. But again, you want to spark interest. Maybe you divide the episode. If you have a 25-minute show, then maybe you have one bullet every five minutes. It doesn't have to be exact, but you want to give an idea of what the whole episode is going to contain. And You don't want to have five bullets of just a five-minute section. Mm, Okay, okay. So I want to dive more deeply into this. So the second part of the show notes basically is titled what to listen for in this episode, something like that. What you should be listening for in this episode is kind of a good title for that. Sure, definitely. And then you said generally three to five bullets. If we can do it in three to five bullets, that's the best. If it's a super long one, you might have to add more, but really three to five is going to be the better number. You said if it's a short one, a way to think about it is to use like every five-ish minutes, there might be a new idea. So you put that in. Now in real time, like for example, is this a bullet point number one is how Adam does his show notes? Or is it like the three parts of the show notes are, or the six parts of the show notes are, and you list the six? Like what does each bullet point need to have and kind of like look like? Yeah. So with each bullet and, you know, keep in mind, these are going to be the maybe the five most interesting things or the five most valuable takeaways of the episode. And so you want to describe each bullet in a way where it inspires you to listen. Again, it sparks your curiosity. And so if you list something like how to write show notes or tips for writing show notes, I mean, it's okay. It tells you what you're going to hear. There's not a lot of persuasion, right? So the second example you gave are five tips that you should think about when you're writing show notes or three best things to include in your show notes, right? Something that's going to tell you what you're going to hear, but you don't want to give away the answer because you definitely want your listener to tune in. All right. So I'm getting two main takeaways from the copy. And by copy, we mean the script, the writing, the copywriting, and not copywriting like 
copy r-i-g-h-t but not the rights to the copy but the w-r the writing how you write the copy the way that it's written the two takeaways big ones were that it should be persuasive copy and that it should propose the question not answer the question so persuasive meaning sales cop getting somebody interested spark their interest make them curious when people are curious they got to see what this is all about so using that persuasive copy and making sure you're only really proposing the question instead of answering the question completely because if they see the answer they don't have to listen you want them listening you need them to actually go to the episode and listen Because that triggers some algorithms for you. So are those two takeaways fair for you, Brian, on the second part where it says what to listen for in this episode? Absolutely. You nailed it right on the head. Boom. I love it. And the third one, as I got in my notes here, is resources that were mentioned in the episode. What are some examples of resources that we might put into the resource section for different episodes. Yep. So for example, if you have a guest interview, maybe your guest topic and they're talking about something that they wrote in their book, or they're talking about a service they offer at their company. You nailed it earlier with their website and maybe a link to a giveaway item, right? Maybe they want to give you a free how-to book or something on what the episode is about, but you know, you definitely want to list any links. You want to list any articles that you referred to, any websites, any books, and then you want to, if you can hyperlink it for your guest, And then that way it makes it more convenient for your listener to find the info and then gets them to where they need to be faster. Yeah. I know that on the podcast on podcasting things that we've done in the past, there might be resources of a podcaster generally needs to automate as much as they can. So we might talk about a resource of, I personally use Calendly. And now actually in our show notes now, Calendly is automatically going in because now people are like, what's Calendly? How do you use it? And I'm about to share a little bit. So now it has to go underneath number three, which is resources found in this episode. Yep. Resources mentioned in this episode. So it'll be like, you'll see Calendly.com down below. And the reason it's there is because we talked about it And we don't want you to forget about it. We don't want you to have to do all the research on your own. So we always instruct the person who edit our podcast and writes our show notes that they'll listen for those resources and put them in part three. So like automatically you can scroll down and have a direct link to Calendly. I'll give you a ninja strategy if Brian doesn't mind. Brian, do you mind if I give them a ninja strategy? Let's do it. A second level, the 201 instead of the one. No, this is like a 301. As far as these links, one thing that we do in our company at Grow Your Show and our podcast on podcasting is we make sure that whenever possible, those links can be also affiliate links. It won't make the listener pay any more for the thing, but we might make a few pennies here and there. It can help with the business, the cash flow, making sure that the podcast doesn't cost us money. Instead, it's putting money in our pocket. And that doesn't mean that we're bad people because we're monetizing a show. In fact, it allows us to have more resources to support more people, to help more people. So the second level of utilizing these resources is, for example, if with Calendly, if I have an affiliate link that I could possibly share I'll have my team go in and try to make an affiliate link for that thing. Or if we talk about a certain book, we'll go into Amazon and Audible and we'll try to get that same book with links that are using an affiliate link. So we can also, hopefully, you know, a hundred people will buy that book at 20 bucks and we'll make 5%, I think. Pretty sure it's 5%. So that's like a dollar per book. And so we might make a hundred bucks that episode by just mentioning that there's this book and we go out of our way to pull those resources and have them all queued up so you don't have to look for them. So yeah, ninja strategy or second level strategy, whenever possible, you can use affiliate links for those resources. Brian, that was really concise. I totally understand like 
what these resource section is all about, what it's supposed to have. It's basically anything mentioned in the podcast that is a place where they can go for more information, etc. So love it. How about the guest info? I know there's two main parts of like what's underneath the number four, the guest info. What are those two parts and why do we do it that way? Yep. So guest info is really important. And again, it allows you to tell your listener all about the backstory for two reasons. One, you obviously want to promote them and give all their information out. But the second thing is it allows you to save time in your episode, introduce your guest, tell them what they do, and then say, hey, for everything that you ever wanted to know about this guy or gal, check the show notes. The whole bio is there. So, and to go back to answer your question, two parts of the guest info section, one being the bio of that person you interviewed, if you had an interview, which is, you know, their full name, their information. The next part is how to connect with them. So they may provide you a bio, they may provide you a website or some social media links in order for folks to connect with them. So that's what you want to provide to your listener is the ability to get right to your guest for whatever they need. Love it. Love it. Love it. So now, and this is dependent on if you even have a guest, right? You don't have a six-part show note system if you don't even have a guest. Then you have a five-part show note system because you don't want to have the guest info if you don't have a guest. So obviously, if you're having your podcast and you don't interview anybody, now you just throw out number four because you don't need it. And you now have the five-part show note system. It doesn't sound as cool, though. Yeah. Or you, can, <laughs> or you can just get a guest for your next episode. And you get the there whole you go. thing. They're like, <laughs> I really want to use the whole six parts. So I need a guest this time. All right. I got two takeaways from you, Brian. As you were mentioning the guest info, there's really two main parts that we need to put in there. One of them is the bio of the guest, like the information of the guest. And the other one is like the links to connect with a guest for... Example, it could be that they gave you their Instagram and their personal website. So those are the two links that you'll put underneath number four. You'll have the bio of the guest and you'll have those links to connect with the guest. That's all under part four of the six-part show note system. But you mentioned something else that had a really good takeaway and I don't want to make light of it. I don't want to pass through because I think it's good enough that the listener who's a podcaster definitely needs to hear it and implement it. And that's basically that I think you said something like you don't want to have to like basically read the whole bio. And I resonate with that a lot. A, because I'm dyslexic and I don't want to freaking read someone's bio (laughs) is about the worst thing I could do. But ultimately on top of that, I think that reading a guest bio, it's like, I feel like the listener probably is thinking, get to the point, get to the content. I don't want to just hear the whole life story of this person. Like, yeah, we did it with you today, Brian. We don't normally do it. Um, But it's like, I feel like it bothers the listener. It's like, oh my gosh, I could have just read this. If I wanted to hear all this detail, I could have just read it. So you mentioned that it allows you to just mention the one or two more noteworthy things or things that relate to today's episode. So for example, maybe when I'm introducing you, I say, you know, this is my buddy. I've known him for a long time. He left 15, 16 years of corporate to come work with us. I'm really excited to have him on the show. And now I didn't say this. I wish I did now. Now I'm like kicking myself, but I'm really excited to have him on the show. Please introduce, please welcome Brian Newell. And then everybody claps. And everybody's excited. But I didn't tell about how many kids you have. I didn't tell what city you live in. I didn't tell what you graduated with. I didn't talk about all those things. I just highlighted some stuff, mostly from my heart. So I thought that was definitely notable when having the guest info. If you put it in the show notes, you don't have to read the whole damn thing. You don't have to bother yourself or bother your listener with all of the details, but perhaps your guest wants it to be known. So you can just say, Hey, the bio is already in the show notes. If you want the whole bio, just scroll down. That's where you get that. Boom. Love it. So here's my guest. Here's why I have them on. And then you can check them out in the show notes. Wait, I was going to try to push a button. 
But I guess I have to push this button because it took me so long. There we go. That's crickets. I was you can't say, hear it? I, <laughs> I hear something. You're like, is that birds? Yeah, it does sound um, like... All right. So we talked about the summation. We talked about what to listen for, which is kind of like the bullet points you called it. The resources mentioned in this episode, the guest info, which had the two parts. We talked about all of that. But the fifth part is... Remind me again, what's the fifth part? So the fifth part is for the host to put their connection information in. And that could be arguably the most important part, right? Let folks know all your social media links, all your websites, maybe your email, maybe your Calendly, if you want to have a meeting, but you know, how you want to be connected as the host of your podcast and how people can reach out to you, how people can get on your show, how people can get you on their show and so forth. Mm. So I've always thought of having too many, I call it call to action, CTAs. I've always felt like having too many CTAs is like a bad thing. So if you're putting in the host info and everybody who's listening either has a podcast already or they're about to launch a podcast, so they need to be having a way for people to connect. What, in an ideal world, in your opinion, Brian, what amount of things would you have in there? Would it be download my free book? Would it be go to my Instagram and my Facebook and my TikTok and my Facebook? I I already said that. And my uh, LinkedIn and my meetup and my all these other platforms. Would it be like every single link to every single thing? Or like in your opinion, earlier you said in the summation, less is more. So what are we talking about for the host info? I think along the same lines, you said it perfectly, too many calls to action, too many options, and it confuses the listener. And if they're confused, they won't be able to make a decision and they won't do any of your calls to actions. So I think you have one main call to action. Maybe it's download this free thing about what we just talked about. And then maybe a lesser option would be schedule a call with me. And then, so you have the Calendly link on every single episode, and then maybe you have a superior or a major call to action, one specific one for each show. I don't know if everybody listening is going to want to go to this level, but there is something we've done at Grow Your Show. We have several different lead magnets. Last time I checked, it was like either six or seven different lead magnets that basically it's like a resource that the listener could have, but we don't mention every resource every time either. It's just like, maybe we're talking about the show notes and we have like a lead magnet that it's like, download our, what is it called? A uh, template of the show notes here. And that's like a call to action. And maybe we're not having all the other calls to action. Maybe we're not having all the other lead magnets today, but we would be able to connect with our listener today if they were like, oh, I'm interested in knowing more about having this template. I don't want to just be told it. Just give me the freaking template and I'll use it. I'll plug it in. I'll make sure that my team always uses that because some people, they like are paying somebody to do this stuff, right? The person doing it, they don't have the system. So maybe they can like get the system and give it to them. So that would be an awesome lead magnet and it would be useful today. And it would be just like one of the things. Go to Adam's Facebook if you want to follow him on Facebook. But if you want this like template, it's yours for free. You just have to put in your email and then we spam you forever. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds we like a deal. We don't spam you. Come on, guys. Maybe. Next. So the guest info is number four. The host info is number five. What's number six again? Number six is the exclusive area for your sponsor. So if you have a sponsor, if you're monetizing, maybe you're sponsoring your own show, maybe you have a few ads, then that is the section where all of their info is going to be, any necessary links, any information about the sponsor and what they do and how they do it and how you can get in contact with them as well. Awesome. So it's like, it could be like a little bit about the business that is sponsoring or a little bit about the coach or the mentor that's sponsoring the podcast. And if they're sponsoring that episode, you basically might even have like a little summation of what they do, not to confuse with number one, but a little like a uh, writing of like what that company can do. 
and who they help. And then I'll link something like that. Yep. Like a little short mini company bio. Exactly. And here's a trick question, Brian. What happens if our listener today, who's a podcaster, A, they don't have guests. They're like, oh, I don't have guests. I always do my own. Or I don't have a business podcast. It's me and my co-hosts. We're doing a scripted drama podcast. So we don't really have guests. We just have our actors or ourselves. And also, we don't want to monetize or we haven't figured out how to monetize yet. So we don't have like any sponsor info. How many parts to the show note system will they use? Well, if I use my math skills, yeah. they would get four part show notes template because they wouldn't need the guest info or the sponsor info. Okay. So they're crossing out four, they're crossing out six, and they've just got one, two, three, and five. So that's the new four part show note system. That's right. That's the it doesn't abbreviated sound as good. It doesn't sound as good as a six part show note system. Six part sounds ideal. So I think they need to have sponsors. They need to be monetizing. They need to be having a guest, at least sometimes. Brian, what bonuses are there? I think there are some bonuses. You know, I was taking some notes and a couple of bonus sections that you may want to add. And this is just an example of what a few clients have done. You might want to put a few quotes from your episode after that sponsor section. Maybe the best quote from your guest or maybe a meaningful, enlightening quote that you happen to say during the episode. Maybe you throw it at the bottom there. Almost the same way that you'd see like maybe in a email signature, right? Like, you know, thanks. Have a nice day from Brian. Here's my quote of the day. Yeah. Uh, and so something special to that episode that you can include at the bottom. So if somebody might want, they're like, oh, six part show note system. That sounds so cool. I wish cool started with an S. Six part show note system. So that sounds so super. And they're like seven would be so much sillier. No, better. So the seventh one would be like the quotes from the episode, episode quotes. I know people that they post on social sometimes. They'll be like quote of the day. It could be quote of the episode. Number seven. Exactly. Now you have exactly. a seven part show note system. Yep. And it and still then- sounds so Super. Yeah. And you can even repurpose that quote into more promotional materials for your episode. You can post them on social media, create a picture, throw the quote on there, makes you look good, sound good, and gets your message out there as well as uh, some good exposure for you. How about, because some people, every time I say an S word now, it like, I'm thinking that I'm overdoing it. I'm trying to change my whole way of talking to not have that letter anymore. All right. (laughs) I want to talk about titling an episode because that's kind of part of doing the show notes too. That is an important section. You definitely want to have a title. All right. You might even call it mandatory. I guess we can leave with that. (laughs) Absolutely. So for the title, again, spark curiosity. Keep it short and sweet. Usually, you'll want to include your guest name, right? Let them know that here's the reason I'm bringing them to the episode. You know, I value your time. I'm putting your name on my show. It may or may not have the episode number. Some folks like to have their episode number at the front of the title, and some don't. Personal preference of what the host is wanting to do. But again, just uh, you want to have a short title that's going to tell them what it's going to be about, mention who's in it, and spark interest. I'm making a note. That's why I'm so quiet. So here's what I'm getting. You may or may not want an episode number. Now, there is a lot of controversy on this. Just I'll mention there's many, many people that say you're wasting space by having an episode number or the name of the person. Some people are like, you're totally wasting space. Like, don't do that. I have a pet peeve about is two things about the episode number. Number one is where it literally says maybe when in the episode title, you have to put your podcast name in it. So it'd be like the podcast on podcasting episode number 155. That just is like, you're wasting so much real estate and we haven't even like hooked anyone. So I say with 
episode numbers. If you're going to do it, I like just maybe doing the number by itself. Maybe if at all, you might just go EP for episode, like the short for it, EP 109, but not EP 00003 because it's the third episode. That's too much wasted space. So EP3 is probably fine. But the other pet peeve that I have about this is that there's many platforms like their hosting platforms like Buzzsprout, Libsyn, and Podbean, and Captivate, and so many others. Maybe we, now we have to put all those as the resources, darn it. So there's all of these different like companies that host, and some of them propagate... Uh, what's a better word for that? Some of them generate their own episode number automatically... But you're also putting it in the title, and so when people see it, they see the episode numbers showing up twice. That bothers me, too. So I know that there is some controversy around episode numbers in the title. If you're going to do it, just make it short and sweet and make sure you're not doing it twice on accident. And with the person's name, here's some considerations for the title. If the person is extremely famous... Maybe they're the president of the United States. Maybe they are an actor or that everybody knows or a, uh, a musical artist that most people probably listen to. Then it's going to make a huge difference that you want to make sure that their name is there and as soon as possible. But if it's a normal person who has the fame of, let's say, Brian or Adam, we're normal people. We're not like extra famous we can go to the grocery store without people stopping us for our signature. In that case, if you're going to put the name, then maybe put it at the end of the title. So you'll give EP3 for episode number three, and then it'll say how to solve this problem. And then it might say with Adam Adams, because he's just a normal person who can go through the grocery store without signing his autograph. So with Adam Adams at the very end might be the way that you end up doing that. That's definitely my suggestion. I want to share what I heard, what I learned, some takeaways from this episode. With the summation, it's generally two to three sentences, short and sweet, and it lets people know what they're getting into. Number two, what to listen for. The takeaways that I have here is that you're using persuasive copy and you're proposing a question, basically not answering the question, but getting somebody interested in what they're going to learn. And you want that to be three to five bullet points. Number three was the resources. And this is anything that you mention on the show in passing. Now it should go down in case somebody's like, what did they say? I've never heard of that. How do you spell that website? Is there a hyphen or a dash in there? Is it a .net or a .com or a .com? AU or is it a dot AI or whatever? Well, hey, that stuff is already automatically there. So you don't have to stress out your person. Number four was the guest information, which had two main parts. It was the bio for the guest and any links to connect with the guest. Number five was the host info. And the takeaways that I got was short and sweet, just like the summation of the whole episode. It doesn't have to have a whole bunch of call to actions, maybe one or two. Maybe download this thing for free and connect with me here. Schedule a call with us. If the guest is kind of like your company, I mean, if the host is kind of like your company, like on the podcast on podcasting, it's always sponsored by our company, Grow Your Show, growyourshow.com. You might put, hey, schedule a discovery call if you want to work with us. Boom. Easy enough. And the sponsor info was if you have somebody paying to be in front of your audience, you want to give them a space. And it's going to be at the very bottom of the show notes. And then the bonuses were, I think I remember two bonuses. One of them was turning the six-part show note system into the seven-part show note system by adding quotes. And the other one was titling an episode. Brian, what's the most inspirational thing you can say to somebody about to start a podcast? You're Thank on the spot. I know. You're giving me a good one here. Tons of people are going to look for this. Since we're talking about show notes, just keep in mind with your show notes, persuasive copy, short and simple, and 
try to use different verbiage all around the show notes. You know, you don't want your title to match your bullets. You don't want your bullets to match your summation. And so keep it simple. Keep it persuasive. Keep people coming back. That was a good way to end. You're a natural. I don't know if you're listening to this and you're thinking, man, what's Brian's podcast? He's so good at this. He's obviously he has his own show. We actually broke his virginity today <laughs> on jumping on a podcast. That's, is it called breaking virginity? I don't think so. Is it taking it? <laughs> yes. What did we do? It sounds so bad. We're going to have to mark this as explicit. Yeah, whatever Explicit you, content. Whatever we did, we did. Because uh, this is your first time ever. Yep. I'm glad you joined us. Thank you. And you know what, buddy? I'm going to have you come on the show more often. There's definitely one thing that you do for the podcast, which is this whole private messaging campaign. So I want to do another episode about the whole private message campaign, why it works, how it works. I think people will be interested in that. Whenever we publish that, that link will be one of the resources in this show notes. So my team will always be like ready. We'll go and publish that other one later on whenever we record it. They'll put it down here. So if you're listening in the future, I don't know what gas prices are there anymore, but you're going to be able to check out that other podcast episode with Brian right away by scrolling down. Appreciate y'all for listening. If we can help you with anything, go to growyourshow.com, schedule a call with us. Brian and I would love to support you, pour into you and get your podcast to that ultimate level where you're being ranked across all podcasts in the world, which is actually true, right, Brian? Exactly right. Global rankings. Global that's we, rankings. That's what we shoot for for our marketing. Badass systems for show notes and a global ranking. Yeah. That's what we can do. <laughs> and we're also good people. That's important, right? Yep. Good right. dude. We got to go. We got to go. We're out of here. See you on the next episode. Bye for now. Two quick things before you go. Number one, if you are looking to upgrade like your podcast equipment or just get your very first affordable microphone, then go to growyourshow.com forward slash PDF. That link's in the show notes. Go ahead and scroll down. On that PDF is 100% equipment for your podcasting studio that I've personally vetted. My team has vetted this. We know that it works. We know that it's affordable and we don't want you paying more for your podcasting equipment. So again, if you're looking to upgrade your equipment or get your very first inexpensive microphone that works great, that's where you go. And then number two is got a free course A to Z on everything you need to know about podcasting. And you don't have to go anywhere but the podcast in order to access it. You don't have to even give me an email address to access it. It is just the very first six episodes of this podcast. So what you'll do is you'll scroll down a bit. You'll click on the all episodes and scroll down because we're hundreds of episodes in and you'll see the episode one, two, three, four, five, and six is a free course from A to Z on launching a top podcast. Take advantage of those two things. I'll see you on the next episode.